Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, as a Christian, my sole aim is to glorify Jesus Christ, that that his life would be glorified in me and, and through me. You know, I want to bring glory to God. That's what my wife wants to do. That's what we want to do. We want to be pleasing to the Father. You know, and when we take our eyes off of Jesus Christ and put them on this world, we just seem to get consumed by the things of this world. And it happens in every Christian's life. You know, the sea in the Bible, when you read about the oceans and the seas, it always speaks of trouble and of of tribulation and of great trial for God's people. And when we're in walking through this pilgrim life, we are in the seas of tribulation and trouble. But Jesus comes walking to us on the water, on the tumultuous seas, you know, 20-foot swells. He's walking on the water. He has total authority and dominion on of, of the troubles and the tribulations that the Christian goes through. Jesus Christ has total dominion and authority over all that. But our problem comes when we take our focus off of Jesus and start looking at the way, start looking at the problems, and then we lose our focus of Jesus, and we begin to sink. Just like Peter. That's why when Peter got out of the boat, you know, he walked on the water, you know. And how many steps did he take? You know, 3, 10, 15, 20. How many steps did Peter take? He actually walked on the water. Walked on the water. And when he took his eyes off the Lord, and, oh, the waves were boisterous all around him. He took his eyes off of Jesus. He began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Save me, Lord. And the Lord reached down and saved him. See? And the Lord is saying to us, keep your eyes on me, my people. Stop looking at everything around you. He said, we can't make one hair white or black. He said, we can't, you know, change our height. He said, why are we worried about what we're going to eat or drink or wear or where we're going to sleep or anything? He said, what are you worried about all that? He said, don't be anxious for anything, didn't he? But see, this world screams at us daily, worry, 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 worry. Oh, think about this, think about that. But as a Christian, we cannot do that. We have to rebuke the devil. We have to rebuke the world and rebuke our flesh. Okay? Crucify the flesh. Hallelujah. This is what we have to do. We must do this daily. And it's not easy. It's hard. Because the world is busy, 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 busy trying to trap souls and snare souls. Let us keep our focus on Jesus. Let us keep our focus on Jesus. You know, Colossians chapter 3, in verse 1, Paul is talking to us. And he's writing to a church that he never got to visit. He never got to visit the Colossian church. Paul didn't. But these people really love the Lord. And, you know, and they really got one of the most powerful letters of the Pauline epistles that Paul ever wrote. And he says in verse 1, If ye then be risen with Christ. If ye then be risen with Christ. Are you risen with Christ today, Christian? Are you risen with him? This is what Paul says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. That's what he's saying. And we must do that. I'm trying to find my glasses and I can't find them. He says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your affection on things above. That word affections is, it's like all of your, your thoughts. Set your affection on things above. You know, Paul was a pretty uh, awesome individual. And he talked to us out of his experience, okay? Paul did not speak and make up things, okay? Paul didn't speculate, all right? Today, you have all these speculators out in the world today in the Christian faith, and they're speculating. They're speculating about this scripture and that scripture. What does this mean? What does that mean? Well, it's plainly evident, you know, when you're reading 
uh, probably 80% of the scriptures plainly evident what it means, you see. Okay, Paul's saying, if ye then be risen with Christ, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Okay? Set your affection on things above. Now, that word affections is it's like to exercise the mind, okay, to entertain or have a sentiment or opinion, okay? So how many people have opinions, huh? How many, huh? How many people have opinions out there, see? But Paul is saying to set our whole opinion, our whole affection, everything that's about us, okay, upon Jesus Christ. We have to have the mind of Christ, okay, the spirit of Christ in us. We have to let our minds be uh, transmitters, so to speak, to transmit the thoughts of the Holy God, the Almighty Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Not the worldly thoughts, not the worldly stuff, not worldly wisdom, but God's wisdom, okay? Set our, set our affection on things above, see? Not on things on the earth. Not on things on the earth. What's on the earth? Our jobs are on the earth, right? Uh, money's on the earth. Uh, all of our bills that we have to pay are on the earth. All these things are on the earth. If we set our affection on things above, these things will be taken care of. Jesus promises us that. He said, look at the birds of the air. Okay? The birds of the air, they don't plant. Okay? They don't sow, but your heavenly Father feeds them. Look at the lilies of the field. They don't toil or spin. But not even Solomon in all his glory was clothed like one of them. Hallelujah. You see that? It, it's so awesome. And Paul says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead. Ye are dead. Count yourself dead today. Dead in Christ. Hallelujah. And your life, your life, is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. This is going to be a wonderful day, isn't it? Very soon, very, very soon, he's going to appear. We're going to appear with him in glory. You know, we have to keep our focus on Jesus so that we can hear his voice, so that we can walk with him and talk with him. It's so vital in this hour. Let's get back to the cross and let's, let's listen to Jesus speaking to us and showing us from his life. He is our example. He's the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says in Hebrews that he's our forerunner. And today he's calling some of his people to be forerunners. That means to enter into the sufferings of Christ, to enter in, to walk with him, to share in the sufferings that he endured. How many of us really want to do that? How many? I know that he's called me and my wife to do that. We've accepted the call, but we haven't always been perfect in the call. But we're going to continue in the call, no matter what happens. doesn't matter, because he's able to keep us. He's able to keep us. Men will forsake you. You know that? That's what the Bible says. It says don't trust in the arm of the flesh, or you get a curse on yourself. And Jesus Christ will never forsake us and never leave us. Hallelujah. God bless you.